Joining me now, John Solomon, founder of Just the News. John, thank you for helping us out. Uh, I reckon you, you saw Merrick Garland's, what was it, three minutes and 30 seconds uh, press conference. Did you think you learned anything from this? Well, we learned that some of the reports that he didn't approve the warrant uh, wasn't true. Uh, I had been told from the beginning it was approved at the top level of the Justice Department, so that's now true. That's a good thing, because that's the way the process is supposed to work with especially uh, a special political individual like uh, President Trump, who has special privileges uh, as a political figure, free speech figure. So the process seems to work, if he's telling us the truth about that. Here are the issues, right? We now know that they use this extraordinarily invasive search after just two months earlier having a very cordial interaction with the president, albeit it was with a grand jury subpoena, but the president complied. He didn't contest it. He could have gone to court like some people do, say, I have executive privilege. He didn't. He signaled that day, according to multiple witnesses, that, hey, if you need things from me, I don't know what you're looking for. Go find it. The agents tested that theory right away by asking, all right, can we go see your storage locker? And the lawyer said, sure, let's go down. And they went in the very locker that they would raid eight weeks later. I think that is a question... Uh, a, a, a fact that hasn't been adequately answered. If you had that level of cooperation, why did you have to raid? What the Justice Department's telling me is they have some witness testimony suggesting he was still secreting documents. Uh, but then they went and got the raid on a Friday and they waited to Monday to execute it. They didn't seem to have a sense of urgency after getting the warrant. There's just some things in 35 years of covering the FBI that don't add up here. And I think we just got to keep drilling down for facts. I mean, John, the question is... Was there any sort of imminent risk that crucial documents, classified or otherwise, would be destroyed or concealed? Was there any evidence of that? Because from your reporting, which uh, I take as gospel, frankly, I've looked at you and covered you for a long time, from your reporting, Trump was cooperative. He wasn't hostile. Yeah. He wasn't an adversary. Right up through the middle of June, and then all of a sudden, two months later, bang. I mean, was there a risk? And because that, ex you know, that might at least help us partially to understand this um, outrageous raid. Yeah, well, let me ask you, I can tell you a few things that government officials told me. This is the government's explanations to me, and I think they're very insightful. I asked them, well, if you, this was such an important thing, you had to raid the president, you get the warrant on Friday. Why do you sleep through the weekend and not come back until Monday? And they said, oh, we wanted to work on making this low impact so people wouldn't see us. If you're waking three days to stage a low-impact raid, you apparently aren't worried about imminent danger to classified documents. They also told me another thing, that the information that the president might still have documents in his possession at the, at the compound came in weeks ago and that there's been discussions. Apparently, they didn't act very quickly then. It seems to be that the thing that calendared them, that made them to move very quickly, was they were coming up on the 90-day window before the election, and they want to squeeze this in before actions against political figures are generally banned under the attorney general guidelines. I'm not sure the judge has gotten all the information he might have wanted to have on this. We'll have to see when the search warrant comes back, the actual affidavit, if we can get that unsealed, what the justification was. Did the judge get a straight story? Or did he get one like the FISA judges got back in 2016? Mm, good point. So, John, um, let's look at this. Um, they're unsealing the search warrant. How fast will that become public, do you reckon? Oh, it could happen today or tomorrow, but the search warrant's not going to have very much. I'm going to tell you what it says, because I've been able to get information from it. There are two statutes they're looking at, theft under the Presidential Records Act, so holding back documents that are covered by the Presidential Records Act. That's not a very enforceable law. And then two, Classified Information Protection Act. Uh, there are certain classified information, uh, classified documents that might be at risk. We need to return them. That's all it's going to basically say and then say, listen, we're going through the compound. When you get the returns, here's what you're going to find out. They probably took like 12 boxes full of items. It's not going to be very specific. It's not going to say we took a, a document from North Korea. It'll just say we took about 12 boxes of uh, documents. So it'll be sort of generic. The most important thing will be a more detailed search warrant return, which often the court will get later, be more specific, and the affidavit that the FBI swore when they got the warrant. That is the problem that was at the heart of the FISA case. It's been the part and some of these other warrants that have been challenged. We need to know what they told the judge and what they didn't tell the judge before they got the search authority. Well, that's what federal prosecutors, former federal prosecutors, have said to me, which I mentioned in my opening riff. It's the application... Yeah and the affidavit that will tell what the probable causes were uh, for regarding any evidence uh, of federal crime. 
And that is never likely to see the light of day, they say. Do you have any thoughts on yeah. that? It's very hard to get them unsealed unless there is a form or allegation of misconduct or uh, some misleading. Now, there's a couple interesting angles here, right? The judge previously, before he was a judge in 2017, criticized the president in his moral character. When you sign an affidavit to search someone, one would suggest that that is a biased state of mind. You've expressed your bias previously. It is possible the Trump lawyers could go in in the next few days, try to disqualify the judge, and as part of that, want to see what it was that he was basing his information on. But it's going to be very hard for journalists to get it, or even Judicial Watch to get it, absent an extraordinary allegation of wrongdoing. Yeah, so that's the beef. I mean, the application with the affidavit is the beef. Um, yeah. Unlocking uh, or uh, unsealing the search warrant is really not beef. It's just mostly lettuce and the bun, but no beef. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I'm and, getting but, hungry already. Yeah. <laughs> well, but the thing is, John, I mean, I think this has attracted so much attention. I mean, if the Justice Department, I mean, um, Garland said today that, you know, people wouldn't have an interest in this. But then he said, well, because Trump released it, that all of a sudden everybody had interest. My response to that is whatever. When they started banging the door down, everybody had an interest. And therefore, uh, I don't know how, what reporting you're going to do or what you're thinking about, but for him to think that there isn't going to be another uproar over this, where he's essentially in three minutes and 30 seconds, whatever, said nothing, I think he'll be very badly mistaken. Yeah, listen, the people were going to care. And the Justice Department knew they were going to care. That's why they were trying to worry about the impact, go in with low impact. His statement is debunked by his own department's comments. But let me tell you about something that struck me. The Merrick Garland was very buttoned up today. We don't talk about anything about ongoing cases except what the law allows us to. I encourage people to go back and take a look at all the comments that the FBI Director Ray and Attorney General Garland made about the ongoing January 6th committee. They were expansive in their comments, describing efforts and amounts and motives and, and penalties. Uh, it seems like the Attorney General can comment on criminal cases when they're in the interest of his Democratic Party and then be buttoned up when it's not. I just encourage people to go back, look at those clips. You saw a different attorney general when he was glad to talk about the January 6th cases. Yeah, you know, he, he sort of referred to, I don't know if he used the term double standard or not, but double standard. So I was thinking about Hillary Clinton and James Comey. But double standard, John Solomon, you know, I was also thinking about a potential assassin outside of Judge Kavanaugh's house or double exactly. standard on just the fact that all the protesters were on the real estate owned by j other justices. Uh, he never said, you know, never went after that. In fact, he kind of dissed it. Oh. He never, you know, he, he went, seemed to go out of his way. Or remember the parents, uh, domestic terrorists at the Board of Education meetings. I mean, he wasn't bashful about commenting on that. But this one, all of a sudden, oh. he's buttoned down. John, last one, and you're very kind with your time and your insights. Uh, is your reporting showing anything that the White House knew about this no, I wouldn't be surprised based on tradition if the White House counsel knew, but all my reporting indicates the president was never told until it became public. That would be consistent with how th things happen. Sometimes the White House counsel will get a heads up, but keep it to himself un until it becomes political, so then he has the, uh, the ability to tell the president something. But all my reporting suggests that the White House kept out it. This was at the highest levels of the Justice Department. Ray and uh, Garland definitely were in the know. I've been reporting that for two days. I do think it was kept out of the White House. So far, I don't see anything to contradict that. I'm going to bet, John, when it's all said and done, that you're right. The council knew and the chief yeah. of staff knew. All right? This is from my own experience. These were highly right. impactful decisions. Anyway, John Solomon, thank you ever so much, and congratulations thank on you, your great reporting.